Did I hear a rock and stone? Rock and stone, everyone. Welcome back to episode 11 of my How to Paint Deep Rock Galactic board game miniatures. If you missed the previous episodes, feel free to check those out. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want updates and notifications for the rest of this series and future content. As always, I'm going for fast, easy, tabletop-ready paint jobs. Today's miniature is the Spitball Infector. The artist here added some spiky vines and bits to it that, as you can see from these screenshots from the game, it does not have vines or anything of that nature. I did take some of the color palette from these game screenshots though and try to incorporate that into at least one of the two models I'll be showing you. As with the previous episodes, I'll break this down into two sections for each of the two models I'm doing. The first model will be a brighter, poppier contrast model. I primed the first model on all white for maximum contrast color pop. The first step on the brighter model was to give some fire giant orange speed paint on those lowest spiky vines. I followed up with some Dallar Rowney Flame Orange ink with glaze to really punch the color up more. I mixed that as a 4 to 1 mix of ink to glaze. I moved on to Plasmatic Bolt Army Painter Speed Paint for all of the vines and growth that wrapped its way up the upper section of the plant. Basically any of those vines that don't have that spiky style that was at the base. I go with camel green for the central core of the plant that the vines twist around as they run up. I run the camel green right up to the neck and the base of the jawbone. 
I leave those domed venom sacks on each side of the neck for the next step, though. For the Venom Sacks, as I refer to them, I went with the Malignant Green from Army Painter Speed Paint. For the spine running up the back side of the plant and the bone supports around the head and that front facing forehead. I went with the Sand Golem from Army Painter Speed Paint. I decided to run Zealot Yellow Speed Paint over the plasmatic bolt vines running up the plant to create a greenish yellow colored vine instead of the pure blue. I'm a big fan of how the Zealot Yellow looks layered over some of the other Speed Paint colors. Here's a cool effect of an amphibian warrior from Alter Quest. This was that Zealot Yellow over Camo Green. So I love that effect. It's fun to play with these and come up with new combinations like this.
I went with pallid bone for the areas between the back of the head bones. Blended in some over the spine as well and did an initial layer of this in the inside of the mouth. came back to the core of the plant to add some of that deeper shading in the grooves by lining it with some sap green ink from Dollar Rowney. Really any dark green would probably be fine here, but it's what I had on the desk so I went with it. One last tweak was to make the lower jawbone also that plasmatic bolt to match the upper. I did like the color contrast between the sand golem and plasmatic, but it just didn't feel right having the mouth mismatched. Also, side note, this is shot with a new Panasonic uh, DSLR camera. I'm trying out here to see if I can start doing better 4K. It's going to take some practice here, but I hope to incorporate it more in the future videos. Spitball Infector number two was done to go kind of the opposite direction of the first one. I wanted a more subdued, earthy colored model for the sake of giving anyone watching some color palette options to compare against. For the base area, I treated this like the kind of dirty roots. Anywhere there were spots between those spiky vines at the base, I went with dark wood speed paint. For those few spiky vines at the base, I went with hardened leather to have some variation in the browns.
I decided to get a nice coat of homemade Dollar Rowney Sap Green Wash on all the cracks and grooves of that core part of the plant. I created this using the Less's Wash recipe as a foundation for the mediums added to the ink. I'll link that above. If you've watched my series so far, you'll probably notice I do create a fair amount of my own washes. I do generally utilize the flesh washes from Army Painter, Vallejo, or Games Workshop. I just find it far cheaper and more enjoyable to create all the other various shades I need from the ink colors I have here so I can help match it to a specific color on the miniature I'm painting. After the wash dries, I proceed to apply palette bone to that spiny back area and the bony structure on the head that supports that leathery looking skin on the front and back. I decide to put a layer of the palette bone on the front area above the mouth as well, but I have intentions of going back over that shortly with another color. For the vines on the upper half of the body, I went with Sand Golem to once again give more variety of browns in these various vines creeping up the plant. Yep, experiment time. I put some of that sap green wash on this odd old childhood 
sci-fi figure I found. Just primed it up white. I wanted to test out my mix of speed paints before applying that over the Spitballs core. I went with camo green, speed paint medium, and absolution green in a three to two to one drops mix. For those leathery-like portions suspended between the bones on the head, I went with Malignant Green. I mixed up some Zealot Yellow and Sand Golem Speed Paint in a 1 to 1 ratio and painted up the Venom Sacks on the neck and those small squares and circle in the mouth, the lower portion there on the, the tongue and the back. Pallid bone on the top and bottom mouth jaws.
be sure to take care to soak up any major pulling. Once the mouth was dried, I also did one more thin coat of the Zealot Yellow on the inside to get a more yellow level I wanted. Final step was to do some subtle ledge highlights with some Army Painter Brain Matter Beige. That's normal War Paints acrylic. I hit various areas along the spine, edges on the bones on the head, and some of those sharpest edges on the vines wrapping around. Uh, I went for the less is more approach here, just a, a subtle highlight so it didn't overpower what I'd already done. Using the side of the brush and just gently going along some of those really sharp ridges. departing in T-minus two minutes. So here are our two finished spitballers. We got bright and poppy on the left and a little more earthy tones on the right. Episode 12, I don't have a preview for you today. I've been working on the Clifford Wardens and some of the flying critters from the uh, expansion, if you happen to get that with your game, and possibly the web spitter. So I will hone in on one or two of those by next weekend and get that video out. As always, I appreciate you coming by. Like and subscribe if you'd like to keep in the loop on the next episodes coming out and future content.